Welcome to Find Your Outdoors. I'm your host, Frank Willem. The May 18, 2019 Joes and Pros Trout Championship at the Blind Tiger Biloxi Beach is fast approaching. So this week, we're going to throw back to last year's championship with FYO Pro staffer Ryan Fiveash and his partner Dax Graham for their first crack at the Trout Championship. Check it out. Let's rock and roll. So we're fishing the Joes and Pros Trout Tournament. It's my first official tournament as a Find Your Outdoors st a Pro Staff member, and I'm fishing with my good buddy Dax Graham. Uh, we like to fish together down there a lot, and we've done some good in the past just fishing recreationally, you know, just out having a good time. Caught plenty of limits, and sometimes we get into some big fish, so we have a lot of high hopes for this tournament. So the tournament allowed us to start off at midnight. Well. During the middle of the night, it's not usually a good time to catch speckled trout, so redfish really like to prowl. Those big ones like to prowl in the middle of the night like that, so we really zoned in on the redfish from midnight till about daylight. Just came across the bulkhead there, Some big fish. Not much happening now. You see these spots here, these spots here are gonna be fish. And actually, judging by those lines there, those are good size fish. So it wasn't too far into the night and we hooked into something really big and we fought and fought with it and I was sure it was a bull red. Should be a red fish. Just take your time with him, you know what to do. That's a good pole, brother. That's gonna be okay, that'll be bad. That's a good fish. But as we got it to the boat, Dax noticed it was a stingray and that was kind of a bummer. So. During that entire time of fishing, we ended up, we caught a lot of sharks. There seemed to be a lot of sharks in the area for some reason and uh, we caught a few more stingrays. We were very hopeful for redfish, but we ended up zeroing on the redfish. We didn't do very well. So we started moving over into the speckled trout. So the areas that we zone in at in the past where we had caught our bigger trout, there's some jetties right off the front end of the Beau Rivage or the small craft uh, Biloxi Harbor. And uh, we went to focus in those areas because usually those bigger trout, they like to hang out in a certain area and they just kind of hang out there for good once they get to be a giant size. They're not much of a traveler. So we really wanted to zone in on where our big trout areas were and the bite was really slow, really slow. I mean, we went through periods of hours without even a bite. And then next thing you know, we catch a fish or two. Where'd you get hit at, Dax? Uh, I wasn't looking at my bait first time, you know? You don't look at it, and there you go. Good trout to start today. Second one of the day. Yeah, good keeper here. That may not win the tournament, but that's a good start. Pretty fish. He's got it. Hold this. Get it, you better go lose your rod. That could be a giant. He's got, he's off. Good golly. Hey, there we go. Mike keep. Maybe a little small, maybe a little small. Well, right when the sun came up, we switched over to the trout. Well, we went over to this area and uh, we hooked into that real good fish, but at the time, whenever I hooked into the good fish, we had actually sent the cameraman to go off and get us some live bait because we were trying to, you know, get a good fish in the boat. But 
we did uh, end up catching a few more trout, and uh, none of them really that were going to weigh in. Anything. I think so. Rhino right there. That's what you want right there if we can start catching some more of that. That's a good daylight bite, and uh, that was it. We couldn't find nothing else to happen. Well, we've caught a couple this morning, but not what we're looking for. We're, uh, we're in the process of trying to actually get a pattern going. We caught one or two, and then 15, 20 minutes of nothing. So hopefully we're gonna make a change and they'll be fish biting. There's about five or six boats and nobody's catching now, so we're not the only ones. It sure is getting bright. It's nice to have this State Farm hat. Thank you, Mr. Jerry Williams. The bite slows down real bad at the jetty, so we decided to move out a little further and go out. There's another area right out not far from there that's called the Katrina Reef. This area usually holds a lot of good trout, but this, the tide's kind of slow today. So we, uh, we decided to move out in a little bit deeper, get a little bit more in the ocean. So we're going to head out to the Katrina Reef and uh, see what we can find out there. This is basically the same setup, it's basically just uh, bridge pilings and uh, rocks. But uh, those giant trout really love to stage up on those rocks and on those uh, columns. So we're going to try to ease out here and see if we can't get on some that's out here on these columns. We're not looking good for that five fish stringer. Uh, something just happened out there. Um, it went from, you know, a few bites here and there to just completely shut down. And we just, it was like something happened. It totally shut off. We didn't, we stopped catching fish completely and it was starting to get real close to the weigh-in time. So we were kind of pushing it to get in for the weigh-in time and it's not looking good for that fifth fish. So we're easing back in and we're getting real close to pulling up there to, to dock and next thing you know the DMR pulls up. So they ended up wanting to check us out and make sure we were all legal, licenses, life jackets, fire extinguishers, you know the drill. These last 15 minutes or so just trying to put an extra trout in the boat. No, we Not needed five bites. fish. We're Not fishing. We're in the pros and joes tournament but we're a joe right now. We feel like some Joes right now for sure. So they give us the full rundown and they make sure we're okay and they let us go and then we head into the to put the boat up. So we didn't do very well, but we actually do have one fish that could go in that could possibly contend. It's we have an hour and a half to get into the way in and it's a 45 minute drive to get there. And on top of that, we can't find the key still. We're about to rip this boat apart. We got to go from the hard rock. Biloxi Yacht Club, Small Craft Harbor, to the Blind Tiger in an hour and a half and load the boat, so we're about to have to get to it. How's it going, guys? I'm with the Department of Marine Resources. Just out here conducting a recreational fishing survey. Do you all mind if I ask you a few questions? Luckily, the DMR was there for actually just checking on the fish that we had. So, uh, sea trout, spotted sea trout was your first target? Yeah, target that, that, was our, yeah that was our official target, you could say. Forest County? Uh, Lamar. All right, two of y'all, how many times have you fished in saltwater Mississippi in the past 12 months? The shoot hat. 12 months? Anywhere, Louisiana included? No, Mississippi. Oh, uh, Mississippi? Mississippi saltwater. Well, we launch out of Mississippi, so I guess technically, I'd say close to maybe 10 times. Okay. You know, let's say eight. How about the past two months? Three? And y'all y'all got some trout that y'all yeah. kept? Yes, yeah. sir. You mind if I take a look at them? Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. We got one in there. And a, like there's, there's you got a space. flounder as well? Yeah. yeah. There's a sow in there. Uh, when y'all pull them out, when y'all pull the boat, the boat up, you mind if I get some weights and measurements on them? Yeah. Okay. I'll let y'all go ahead and pull the boat up. Okay. Uh, and then we got a bunch of gear, but we don't be up there. We ended up pulling the fish out, and he actually went back and checked into them and seen you, he was able to look into them and tell us the age. He pulled out the flounder. He was able to cut into the flounder and tell us exactly if it was male or female, how old it was. It was actually very interesting, but it was more of just a checking in on the fish and the biologist standpoint more than the um, legalities of if we were doing everything right out there that day.
Can you determine male or female? Uh, man, they're really hard on flounder. Okay, I'll, I'll have to cut into them. Okay. I mean, it's up to you. I'll... It's fine. No, we can Yeah, it's fine, man. I know the speckled trout, they do like the ear uh, pieces, don't they? Yeah, they, what do, they do it on these too, but flounder, man, they're tight. All right, so we finally found Dax's keys. We got the boat out of the water, and this, the second we get the boat out of the water, DMR comes up and uh, wants to check our fish and everything. But he also wanted us to do a survey. Um, yeah, I guess it helps with the conservation side of it, you know, but uh, we helped him out and we did the survey. But now they actually put us a few minutes more behind, so we're really in a super hurry to get to the way in. So stay tuned if we get there in time. So we get over to the weigh-in finally, and once we get there, uh, I had one good fish. We ended up not getting our five fish stringer, so we turned in that one good fish I had, and it actually turned out I ended up getting in the number five spot, and I was looking to be good in the money. Well, with five minutes left, a guy comes into the weigh-in, and he's got a fish that is exactly .05 pounds heavier than mine. It is what it is. Guys, I got knocked down into the sixth place, and I was out of the money just by one. But you know what? That was great, and it was a pleasure to be saying that I've made sixth place out of 206 anglers. We just want to thank our sponsors for letting us fish in this tournament. Um, I want to big, give a big shout out to Find Your Outdoors, Jarrett Williams with State Farm, Overtime Sports, and Killer Bee Bait. I hope to see y'all next time.